Cyber liability insurance is a requirement in today's environment. However, many companies do not yet have a cyber liability insurance policy, and others might not uh, have sufficient insurance. And still others might not be covered in the event of an incident. Let's take a look at the cyber insurance marketplace and why you need insurance and what kind of insurance is best. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy. I'm a vice president at ARG. While I work for ARG, this video is my own and does not represent the views or opinions of my employer. According to recent surveys, only 70% of businesses in the United States and Europe have cyber liability insurance. That means that just less than a third of businesses are completely financially exposed in the event of a cyber attack. Now, some of these businesses may be very small where the risk does not warrant the expense and others might have chosen to self-insure, but that still leaves a significant portion of businesses in unintentionally exposed. Importantly, many businesses are now insisting that their business partners carry active cyber insurance. This makes the self-insurance option less viable for many companies because their business partners may insist on commercial insurance. Here are some additional stats you should know. 63% of organizations report they had a cyber incident in the last two years. That involved the release of regulated information, such as personally identifiable information, or PII, personal health information, known as PHI, and payment information, for example. 44% of companies reported a loss of between $1 million and $5 million over the same period due to cyber incidents. In the United States, the average loss is $4.4 million. The cyber insurance industry has taken on considerable risk and the payouts under these policies are increasing dramatically. Forecasts are that cyber insurance may increase in costs from 500% to 1,000%. That's a five to tenfold increase in the coming years, especially for firms that don't have a security posture that follows best practices. If your cyber posture does comply with best, best practices, increases are expected to be just two to three times. And I say that just two, two to three times, still a large number. So the cyber tools and services you want to obtain may cost a lot, but the cost may be partially offset by reductions in your cyber insurance policy premiums. It's important to understand that cyber insurance is not just a financial instrument that pays out when an incident occurs. Cyber insurance companies are important partners in assisting you in mitigating and recovering from an attack. High quality cyber insurance firms have a portfolio of preferred vendors and partners that specialize in responding to cyber incidents. They're pre-approved and highly specialized. These partners should be your go-to resources should the worst happen. For example, when an incident occurs, your first call to the outside world should be your insurance company. They will quickly refer you to incident response partners, attorneys, public relations resources, negotiators, and forensics teams. These partners have pre-approved statements of work with the insurance company, which greatly increases your chance of being covered. If you do go it alone and use other resources to battle the incident, you may have to fight for full coverage of the cost from your insurance company. Further, because the insurance company recommended partners or specialists, they'll work much more proficiently on your behalf and for your organization. You don't want an attorney you use for contract negotiations advising you on whether paying a ransom group might violate anti-terrorism laws. You need specialists to guide you through the highly complex regulatory and legal requirements after an incident. Cyber liability insurance typically covers organizations when a malicious event occurs that's instigated by a third party, though it can also include incidents instigated by disgruntled employees. But cyber liability insurance does not typically cover incidents or poor IT management. Cyber coverage includes things like mitigation and recovery costs, replacement of compromised hardware and software, uh, legal fees, communication costs, ransom payments, and some uh, and some costs of loss. Some policies even cover lost revenue and wages incurred during the, inter the interruption of the business. As mentioned, cyber insurance costs are increasing, and, and in many cases, what cyber insurance covers is decreasing. Both of these trends call for stronger cybersecurity posture. A strong posture can lower the cost of insurance and make it less likely that your organization will experience an incident which would expose the company to any insurance coverage gaps. Now, to lower the cost of insurance, focus on these following areas. First and foremost, patch your systems. Being able to demonstrate to the insurance underwriter that you have a policy and process in place for implementing security-oriented patches 
quickly and universally is a great first step. Exploiting known vulnerabilities is still the cyber criminal's number one approach. Next, network security. Insurance companies will consider a client's organization's level of network security when determining the rates. Companies ought to invest in network security by taking measures such as implementing multi-factor authentication, instituting an enterprise-grade firewall, employing intrusion protection services, and micro-segmenting traffic. Adhere to a cybersecurity framework is the next one. Some insurance companies have made adhering to a compliance framework a requirement for cyber insurance coverage. First, of course, you want to meet all regulatory requirements for your industry, and then consider pursuing an industry agnostic security framework like ISO 20, uh, 27001 or NIST, that NIST or NIST is the United States government entity. NIST stands for uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology. The NIST standard most adhered to is NIST 800-171. Uh, the next one that you might want to consider is understand the security protocols of vendors and close customers. Vet the security and compliance protocols of potential or current vendors and tightly integrated customers to best protect your company from third-party threats. You should show insurance providers that you've done a thorough research and have addressed third-party security issues. Also, employee training. Most successful cyber attacks occur because of a human error. It only takes one exposed file or an acted upon phishing email to cause a massive data breach. As a result, it's vital to enhance your security training protocols. Teach your workforce how to identify and avoid cyber risks. Lastly, have an incident response plan in place. You're going to experience a security incident. It's almost inevitable. Your organization must have a detailed incident response plan to rely upon when such an event occurs. Your incident response plans demonstrate to the insurance company that you are prepared and can respond aggressively when necessary. So complacency is one of the biggest factors I see in failing to take cybersecurity or cyber insurance seriously. Many companies operate in mundane industries that are not frequently targeted by bad actors, and therefore they don't consider themselves a target. Yeah, it's, of course it's true that healthcare and financial institutions are most targeted but the reality is everyone is a target and the bad actors are using automation to, pro to probe every organization for weaknesses. If you have a bank account, you are a target for cyber criminals. Other than increased costs, how will cyber insurance change in the years ahead? Well, first of all, attestations will become a thing of the past. Rather than filling out a survey saying what you do, the insured will have to prove with proper documentation that the cybersecurity measures they say are in place truly are. The burden of proof is going to rest on you. In order to prove that the security measures outlined in the policy were being properly adhered to following a breach, the burden of proof will no longer be on the insurance company. Coverages will go down. The ability to cover lost revenues, for example, is becoming more and more difficult um, and also much more expensive if you can get it. Lost revenue is a huge exposure for insurance companies. Don't expect them to be willing to take on significant exposure in this heightened risk environment. Getting insurance in the first place will become more difficult. Businesses, can't, uh, businesses that cannot verify proper security measures will not be renewed, even if the company has a long-standing relationship with their insurance provider. Lastly, I'll mention that the two common types of cyber insurance are first-party insurance and third-party insurance. Now, most cyber policies are first-party. First-party insurance protects the organization taking out the policy. In the event of a covered incident, you get paid directly from your insurance company for costs that you incur or damages that you incur. Now, third-party insurance is used by organizations that house the data of other entities. In the event of a compromise, the insurance would cover the cost of, the, of these other entities. For example, if a law firm were to have a data uh, incident where, which resulted in exfiltrated data in a ransomware attack, for example, third-party insurance would cover the claims of the law firm's clients if they suffered damages or costs due to the law firm's incident. Unless you house sensitive data of another organization, you probably will just need first-party insurance, not the third-party insurance I just described. So that's cyber insurance. It's going to get a lot more expensive and maybe even challenging to obtain especially if your cybersecurity posture is not up to industry standards. 
the ability to obtain insurance may be one of the primary drivers to bolster your cybersecurity posture in the future. If you'd like to continue the conversation or discuss how you can increase your cyber posture, feel free to reach out. My contact information is in the description of this video. If you got some value out of this video, I appreciate a like, a, a thumbs up, and thank you very much for doing that. And if you want to return to my channel in the future, the best way of doing that is hitting that subscribe button below. That will put my videos in your feed and allow you to come back here at any time. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.